contact hypothesis, also known as the intergroup contact theory, was first brought up by the American psychologist Gordon Alport. Alport proposed this as a method to improve relations among groups that are experiencing conflict. It would do so by reducing prejudice under appropriate conditions. He also suggested four contact conditions. These conditions were meant to specify intergroup contact to reduce prejudice. The first condition is equal group status in the situation. It is critical that both groups perceive equal status in the situation. Research demonstrates that equal status in the situation is effective in promoting positive intergroup attitudes even when the groups initially differ in status. The next principle is common goals. Contact should involve an active effort towards a goal that the groups share. For example, athletic teams. Teams made up of members from different groups are obligated to work together, rely on each member in whatever their shared goals. We can use the example of team sports such as soccer, baseball, or hockey, in which teams comprised of members from different groups are obligated to work together, rely on each other in whatever their shared goals may be. The next condition is intergroup cooperation. All goals should be based around cooperation between individuals rather than competition. To better explain this, we can look at the Robbers Cave study. During the 1950s, psychologists Muzaffar and Carolyn Wood Sheriff asked the questions, what is it exactly that causes tension among groups and what can be done to alleviate this tension? They hypothesized that the conflict arises amongst groups when they are forced to compete for limited resources. To fully answer this question, the researchers created a series of artificial situations in which the behavior of pre-adolescent boys would be studied. So they organized a wilderness camp for young boys, 22 boys that had never met before. They were all middle-class, Protestant, white boys between the ages of 11 and 12 years old. To begin, the 22 boys were divided into two groups and neither group was told about the existence of the other. During the first week of the experiment, the two groups were set up in completely different areas from one another. This was to ensure that initially both groups would operate as separate camps. This first stage of the experiment was critical in allowing the boys to bond with one another and form social norms by participating in group activities such as hiking and swimming. By the time the first week was over, the boys in each group had formed friendships with one another, bringing them closer together as a team. They even made respective team names, which enforced the team's mentality. In the second stage of the experiment, the researchers had the two groups meet and compete against each other for resources. The activities such as touch football and tug of war, which only allowed there to be one winning group which would receive the resources and the other losing group would receive nothing, were the type of competitions the groups participated in. The boys were also put in artificially created situations by the researchers where one group would gain at the cost of the other. The researchers noticed that these competitions were creating tension among the groups. It began with simple name calling, then escalated to thievery and vandalism of the other team's possessions. There were even outbreaks of violence, in which the researchers had to step in to break up the fights. After this stage, when the winning team was announced, the researchers asked the boys to characterize their own team members as well as the other team's members. They found that they described the opposing group with extremely negative characteristics while holding their own group in high esteem. In the third and final stage of the experiment, the groups were put in situations where barriers were made to common goals, such as fixing broken equipment and helping food reach the campsite when it became stranded. The resolution of such barriers could only be reached through cooperation of both groups. As Sheriff had predicted, this intergroup cooperation fostered the development of positive interactions between the groups. Alport's fourth contact condition was support of authorities and law or customs. He said that when backed by explicit support from social institutions and authorities, intergroup contact would show more positive effects through the support of institutional authorities' norms of acceptance, a guiding framework of how individuals from different groups should interact with each other can be established. Alport deemed these four contact conditions the supporting features of the contact hypothesis.